The National Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Abdullahi Gandudi, has invited Governor Abba Yusuf of Kano State to join his party. The invitation followed speculations earlier that President Bola Tinubu was in the process of reconciling Gandudi and his former boss, Rabiu Kwankwansu, to have him back in the APC. Kwankwansu had left the APC to return to the People's Democratic Party following differences with the then Governor Ganduje before moving to the NNPP to run for president in last year's elections. Ganduje, who is the immediate past governor of the state, was in Kano late Wednesday on his first visit to the state since he left office last May, where he revealed the APC plans to absorb the NNPP and make Kano a one-party state. We are now joined by the chieftain of the new Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, Buba Galadima, to react to this development. Good afternoon and good to have you on Arise News. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for inviting me to this program. Well, the national chairman of the APC, Abdullahi Ganduje, says he wants to end politics of bitterness in the country. But I'm wondering if that is enough justification for desiring to turn Kano State into a one-party state. Isn't this a threat to our democracy? Well, uh, that, that is true. Uh, if this happens, it could be a threat to democracy because there is no alternative opinion. However, uh, Ganduje is wise by half. Because what we learned through the media is that the president has directed him to go and reconcile with his boss. That does not necessarily mean that uh, 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 President Tinubu is asking Konkoso to join the APC. At least that, has, that is not on the cards. What is before us, we are only seven months into this tenor of four years. I don't think anybody is talking about politics now. It is about the governance. However, uh, Ganduja is wise by half in the sense that uh, what he did was to ridicule Mr. President and uh, make him look like a fool by going to announce to the public on, uh, on, on, on television uh, saying that uh, he is inviting Konkoso to join the APC. And even if that is what the president told him to do, I think what he ought to do, he knows the best way to go about it, not by uh, pronouncing it on the press. This now say indicates oh, oh, that uh, Ganduje never wanted, Konko, never wanted to reconcile with Konkoso. Ganduje never wants Konkoso to, to join the APC. He's just fooling the president in order to scare Konkoso away because that is not the best way to go about it, even if the president had asked him to do that. And we do hear that nothing uh, written has been received uh, by, the, um, by the Yusuf camp or uh, by Konkoso, but what do you make of this offer? Is it quite tempting? How can it be tempting? It can't be tempting at all because all that people were speculating was that the president has a say in the judgment of the Supreme Court. You know, Tope and Hawa, both of you know, that uh, there is no earthly reason except the judiciary is compromised for Abbas uh, victory to be, to, be, to be taken away from him. We had won our election square, and even in 19, uh, 19, 2019, Abba Kabir Yusuf won Ganduje in that election. Everybody knows that is why Ganduje's hatred for the Kano people. That is why he wanted to destroy Kano because he felt that Kano people rejected him in 2019. Therefore, he will visit mayhem in, 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 on them. There is nothing he didn't say that we should take over Kano by force. It doesn't matter who is killed. It doesn't matter who is maimed. It doesn't matter who is displaced. It is God's intervention that the Supreme Court, in an attempt to, 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 to bring back its integrity and honor, they have, they, have, they have given that judgment in a manner that everybody in Nigeria is satisfied. And the import of that judgment today in Nigeria is that it even uplifted the image of the country because those who thought that they will take over Kano were of the opinion that if that happens, uh, Nigeria wouldn't have been the same uh, by now. Therefore, 
uh, as far as we are concerned, we had won our election square. We had won our judgments, not based on what we, not that we gave anybody anything or we persuaded anybody to do anything, but because that is the truth. But I'm wondering, is this offer something that the NNPP could explore in future elections, especially to have a more nationalist outlook if the offer is made through the right channels and not through the media? Uh, let me say again that uh, you know that you saw at Iku visiting Konkoso before. Are you, uh, uh, can you remember? Yes, we can. And Peter will be also... Peter will be also spoke with Konkoso, and you saw also Konkoso visiting the president. So we are not enemies, and no Nigerian should think that when you belong to different political camps, you are enemies. We as people in the NNPP will talk to anybody, will discuss with anybody as far as that discussion or, or dialogue will lead to democratic dividends for the country, will lead to peace. In Nigeria, we are prepared and we are open. But that does not mean that any party can swallow us now. What is before us now is pure governance. And Abba Kabir Yusuf is doing that very well. Just three days ago, he became the, only, the first governor in Nigeria to, 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 to install and, and commission a, a hydroelectric uh, uh, power from, from uh, uh, Tigadam. He is working on another one to produce uh, about 22 megawatts of electricity from, uh, uh, from Chalawagoji Dam. He has paid all pensions. He had paid all gratuities. He has given uh, primary school students uniform. He has give, he's given primary school students one meal per day. He has, he has, he has settled all pensions. He has settled all gratuities, as I said. And uh, Abba has, has stabilized the, the politics of Kano. Nobody, this uh, uh, Ekomo people that carry, uh, in, in, because, of the, uh, because Ganduje armed them, because he had nobody using knife, using catalysis, taking bags from women. People cannot go on the, on the streets of Kano. He has, all that had now stopped. You see Kano is taking its glory from the time Rabbi Musa Konkoso had left. You see Kano in the night as if you are, going, you, are, you, are, you are landing in Dubai. That is what it should be. He's building roads. He has opened <coughs> schools. He has sent already 1,100 indigents of Kano to overseas schools to read masters. All those that had first class and, and second class upper were sent to do that. What I am telling you is that as, as I speak to you, no governor, no governor in the whole of Nigeria has performed in these seven months as Abba Kabir Yusuf has done. So all we are concentrating now is not about politics. We want to show to the world that it is possible to do certain things. And that Kwong uh, uh, himself has say, once said that uh, if any governor tells you that there is no money in states, he is, he is, he is, he is not... He's not, he's not being honest with himself. There is money, and we are using that money judiciously. Judiciously. He has repaired hospitals. He has repaired roads. And these are things that we can invite you to physically go and see. Fair enough. Kano, historically speaking, has always been a very politically valuable state, um, confounding everyone, because um, things happen specifically in Kano in a certain way, um, especially with this uh, Kwan Kwasia movement. But what, um, what would this uh, one party state do to the democracy and the dynamics of Kano state, uh, being that it is so uh, very much of an outlier in terms of politics and the way governance is, is done? In, in Kano, you can never have a one-party state. What actually I thought the president meant, go and reconcile with your boss, was that it was what exactly you have now opined. Meaning that Kano is a volatile state, and we can't have two gladiators fighting on the streets of Kano. It will impact badly on, on Kano, on Northwest, 
for northern Nigeria and Nigeria as a whole. That is why he is asking Ganduje that was Kwonkoso not your boss and that I knew you in 1999. You were a deputy governor. There was a governor in that state. He is your leader. And definitely, Mr. President, is wise to say that because he knows that how he runs Lagos. So Ganduje cannot be, cannot be an, an, an irritant in the politics of Kano. Whatever he does, trying to get all the people of Kano killed or deny them uh, 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 dividends of democracy, that is what Tinubu or President Tinubu doesn't want to see. So reconciliation between Ganduje and Konkoso may Oga well for the state because it will allow the governor to do his work and uh, let Ganduje be his national chairman in APC here. But he should not go and interfere in how the government of Kano is run or by, 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 by instigating people to, to, to do what is not correct. But how open is reconciliation? Uh, how open is Rabbi Musa Konkwansu to reconciling with Abdullahi Ganduje? It is Abdullah Ganduja that will reconcile with Konkoso because Konkoso never quarreled with him. Konkoso never fought with him. When he was governor, he didn't, he has never, he has never asked him to do something because this is his suggestion. He allowed Ganduja to run that state as, as he deems fit, having anointed him without spending one cobble. He won elections 100% at that time uh, in 2015. All the senators, all the House of Reps, all the House of Assembly, all the, all the, all, 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 all the uh, local government chairmen and councillors, including governorship. That was Konkoso's handwork. But after four years, the Kano people rejected his style, rejected his, his attempt to knock heads for people to fight because that is trade in, his, his work in trade. So uh, it is him that should go to Konkoso and kneel down and ask for forgiveness. Now, Alaji, it That does that not mean that Konkoso... It seems that at a time, based on what you've yes. just said, it seems that at a time, Kano had actually been a one-party state because you just said that all the lawmakers, local council chairman, you know, from the same party, and it was the work of Rabiu Konkoso. So in other words, is it safe to say that Abdullahi Ganduje simply wants to take a leaf from Konkoso's book? He can't. How can he? How can he? I'm not saying that we will, jo we will join APC. No, that is not on the cards. What the president says is that go and reconcile and work for peace in Kano and development. And if the issue of realignment of politics is not done on the pages of newspaper or on, 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 on television, no. But definitely before 2027, there would be alignments and realignments in the political system of this country. You have to wait, even if you want to align, to see how the governments perform at all levels, such that, and you know who and who are the gladiators that will really bring success to the coalition when it happens. If you don't do that, how can you just seven months into, into governance, you say you are, you are talking of one party state? That is not possible. And we don't think it is on the cards. And what do you make of the timing of this announcement by the national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, uh, Umar uh, Ganduji? No, uh, you, that's why I say he was wise by half. He was pound foolish, cobble wise. What he wants to do is to hedge Konkoso, he, thinking that if Konkoso has been meeting the president, maybe they are talking about Maja. So he doesn't want the Konkoso to come. So that is what. He's trying to do. Because with the way, you, you, don't, you saw only that one in English. If you hear what he said in Hausa, you will pick race. Or Tinubu, if, Tinubu, if they explain to Tinubu what Ganduja has said in Hausa, when he said that whoever comes to this party, I am the grandfather, I am the father, I am the boss. So whoever is coming should leave his toga of being leader in, in another political party. Once you come here, I am your boss. Meaning that he is trying to hedge Konkoso, but also at the same time thinking that uh, what, uh, what the president had asked him to do, he is doing, which is not true. 
Well, no, there's no doubt that Kano State, you know, is the largest base of the NNPP. But I'm wondering what measures, you know, is your party taking to build more structures around the country so that the party can win future elections even beyond Kano State? Well, the most important thing is that uh, let's perform in governance. Once we have anything to show, to showcase, people will be falling in on their own. But that does not mean that uh, we are not talking to people uh, whom we think uh, can, can enrich the, the, the support base of this party. You know, we've been, we've been, we've been, our mind has been taken off by this uh, tribunal and court of appeal judgments. It is, it is just over. And go to Kano. Since, since uh, uh, Governor Abba Kabir Yusuf came back to Kano, he has never left for, for one minute Kano and sleep 23 hours per day awake, working for the benefit of the people of Kano. When people see this, they do not need to be told to even come. But definitely, we are talking to all manner of people. We are talking to all groups. We are talking to all political parties because Nigeria needs peace. Nigeria needs development. We will support those that are in government to make sure that they deliver the dividends of democracy. So as we would also want them to support us in Kano so that we can sh showcase our performance. And surely the people of Kano are receiving or dealing with somewhat of a political whiplash from all the things that have been happening in the state, uh, as you mentioned, uh, especially this most recent one of the, uh, of the ruling that put Abba uh, the Yusuf back in his position. How do the people of Kano state feel about um, these politics right now? <laughs> but you know that uh, the Kano people are the most happiest. If you had seen when Abba Kabir Yusuf left Kaduna on the day he's going to Kano at 8 o'clock, he didn't reach his house until 2 a.m. in the morning. And I wondered how a human being will be standing on top of a vehicle from Kaduna to Kano. And that is Kaduna. Kaduna, as if you are going to Kano, almost everybody in Kano came out because this is their government. This is what they chose. And they are very happy so far with the performance of, of, of Abba Kabir Yusuf. So as far as we are concerned, Kano is a no-go area for any political party. And not because we are coercing anybody, but because we show them that we are with them, we share their pains, we share their pleasure, so we will do whatever is in our favor. Have you seen the, what uh, Abba Kabir Yusuf did two days ago? He was going out to inspect a project when overzealous security people almost pushed one lady to, to, to the gutter. He stopped. Look at the humility. He stopped and came to, to apologize to that lady for what his security men do. How many of the governors in Nigeria could do that? Well, very well said. Now, I know there's no doubt, you know, that you're delighted, of course, with the Supreme Court ruling. And like you said, the people of Kano State are also delighted with the Supreme Court ruling. But I like your assessment, you know, of the performance of the judiciary in Nigeria in resolving post-election disputes, particularly the 2023 post-election disputes. How would you assess their performance overall? Well, 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 you, you know, as I know, that uh, what the tribunals did, <laughs> I wish there would be an investigation by NJC, especially in Kano, where their judgment was for NNPP. They arrived the Kano in the afternoon of Thursday. By evening, they sent a, a, a private plane to pick them and bring them to Abuja, where they, they delivered judgment through Zoom. And that Zoom was arranged in somebody's personal or private house or office. One. Two, look at the Court of Appeal judgment on Kano. It is shameful. It is shameful that, in fact, what Nigerians should do is to protest that the ju that judge that delivered that judgment, Justice Agume, or what do you call him, should resign his, 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 his elevation to the Supreme Court because he doesn't have the heart to dispense justice. 
that man should go. And especially, I'm so bitter because he, they tried to rubbish one of the best lawyers in Nigeria, Chief Omolo, who had everything put before the tribunal, but they didn't even look at his argument, trying to portray the man as an incompetent lawyer. Chief Awomolo is one of the foremost lawyers in this country, being not only the oldest in the profession, but being the, 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 the deputy chairman of the board of benches. But they, are they were trying to rebuild his, his, his reputation. He remains one of the best lawyers in Nigeria and very intelligent, very unassuming, very calm, very cool and calculated. Has got millions of years of experience in electoral jurisprudence, but they tried to rubbish him. Except the Supreme Court did what they did. The judiciary could have been in tatters by now. So I, 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 I will, I will, I will, I will, I don't know what, what kind of word I will use for the Supreme Court. They have done well to themselves, to the country, because they have redeemed their image because of the judgments of the, of the tribunal and some of the judgments of the Court of Appeal. They have retrieved the image of the judiciary. If not, if they had done otherwise, the judiciary, I, I don't think somebody will be proud enough to say that he belonged he belong to the Nigerian judiciary. This was one instance where the judiciary re redeemed itself. You're quite right about that. But let's talk about this uh, new Kano governor, the new uh, administration, Abba Yusuf. What is his agenda for uh, Kano state? His agenda is to raise the standard of living of the ordinary Kano man, not only elites like, like uh, Tope, Hawa, or Buba Galadima. And that he's been doing effectively it is the masses that support him. It is the masses that support our party. It is the party that supports our leader because they know that when we get, they will also get. The children of the poor were 1,000 and one that were taken out of Kano now to go and study overseas. So that not only <coughs> that they study overseas and learn uh, uh, the books, but they will also see how other people uh, manage their own country. This country has to, be, has to be straightened up because we are going the drains. Everybody is looking for money, 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 including, including some bad acts in the judiciary. You can't take money and, 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 and do a crooked judgment. It will always surface. This is why the Supreme Court had the ability, being the leader, 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 leader in the judiciary, to straighten up the, 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 the course of justice. Because if there is no justice, there will be no peace. People should know about that. So as far as we are concerned, our agenda is going on very well in Kano. Abba is doing everything to, to develop Kano and to give the ordinary man, the Talakawa, a sense of belonging, that this government belongs to them and that they can have Anything they want provided it is part of what government can do. Look at people who wanted to get married and they have no money to even pay dowry, let alone to do what you call lefe by, uh, by doing this. He, he, they married out, I think it's 6,000 or so, recently gave them a bed, mattress, fridge, uh, 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 rent a, a house for them for one year, gave them stipends to start life. And that is not like uh, you are doing uh, uh, traders money. No, 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 no. There is a special committee set up to monitor those that were given take off grants, those who got married, so that they do not go and start taking traditional titles or marrying other women. How many of the governors in Nigeria have got that agenda? Well, it's very certain that the new governor cares about family and, you know, that's why he's encouraging marriages in Kano State. And NPP chieftain Buba Galadima, thank you so much for joining us on Newsday. Mm -hmm.